as I'm enjoying a really nice hike up a really steep cliff face, today I thought I would do a video kind of talking, I'm not sure how I'm going to title it, but talking about the state of bushcraft. And this has kind of been spurred, this video, by comments and really the entire bushcrafting community online and in person through different things like Global Bushcraft, the Brothers of Bushcraft, you know, Karamat Wilderness Ways, and just talking about how I see kind of the state of bushcrafting and like I said, this is particularly spurred because I got a comment not so long ago talking about the good old days of bushcrafting before, you know, YouTube came along, ruined it all for the original bushcrafters. And I kind of wanted to talk about a lot of things in this video from the pros and cons that YouTube has helped make bushcrafting and wilderness self-reliance to the general world and how it has shaped bushcraft. If we go way back into bushcrafting, you know, back in the good old days uh, of many of our icons of bushcrafting, people like Nesmic and Sears and all of the good guys, or all the good guys that kind of made uh, wilderness survival a thing, it's always been evolving and really trying to push the boundaries of what, how technology and modern technology can complement wilderness living and self-reliance. And I think it's easy to become distracted by, you know, all of the crazy things and say that they're bad. Really, these technologies have improved. So, basically, the first thing I want to talk about is how far we've come. Now, originally, you know, in the original days, in the early 1900s, when the Boy Scouts were just getting started, and, you know, wilderness self-reliance and survival was becoming more of a passion and less of a reality for most of us, it was beginning, camping and stuff was beginning to come to light and so was the gear appropriate for that. However, materials back then were not very good. And one thing that I love and appreciate about the technology that we have nowadays is superior metals such as super steels for bushcrafting. I also appreciate the lightweight technologies that we've been able to bring into bushcrafting and survival practice such as, you know, mylars, sill poly, you know, uh, sill nylon, and different high strength materials that help us, you know, more easily bring out things like shelters, effective gear that will serve us better. And so while there are a lot of, there are not, <laughs> while there are some people that, you know, wish the, of the good old days when, you know, all we had was wool blankets and, you know, uh, canvas for, you know, treated canvas for our tents and stuff, really we have come a long way in improving that and being able to lessen our loads and that's really important because it allows us better ease and access to come to places such as this. This uh, place that I scaled or this kind of hill that I've scaled would be a lot harder to scale if I was carrying a heavier pack load. And like I was saying, going into this and how far we've come, this new technology or this growth in technology has allowed us to make new forms of bushcrafting far more viable. And that, in my opinion, is a very important thing. I mean, if it wasn't for these technological advances, stuff like Morris Kohansky's super shelters would be next to impossible to make because they require sill nylon, essentially sill nylon or parachute material to make the larger portion of that entire survival. So this next one is probably one of the larger portions that I really wanted to hit on, and that is what we've learned. Now, in the early days of bushcrafting, it was really men such as Nesma publishing books or different kind of pamphlets or smaller materials about what they have learned through their own personal practice. And the amazing thing that's really happened with wilderness self-reliance and bushcraft is this global learning. So whether it's learning from classes such as, you know, put on by the Brothers of Bushcraft or by Karamat Wilderness Ways or many of these other places, or if it's just going to YouTube, there has been an, a large expansion in global learning and what this has learned or what this has done especially for me in my life has been that i've been able to take a lot of these practices put on or used by different cultures different environments and different people all around the world and blend them and find how some of them obviously not all of them but these different practices can be very useful in my practice up here in alaska so global learning has been one of the largest 
parts, I think, in bushcrafting has allowed us to grow at a much more accelerated rate and allowed us to, you know, really become better practitioners overall because I can take techniques that, like I said, are done in Canada or I can take techniques that are done even sometimes in other environments such as South America and, you know, if they're a solid thing that's applicable universally, I can come up here or be here in Alaska and use the same type of mindset and the same type of uh, practices and strategies that they're using in other countries. So that has been one of the largest things and I think the dynamic has really changed from a one-dimensional conversation such as once again you know JP Sears you know publishing a book on wilderness living to you know Morris Kohansky you know making a class or making videos on wilderness living and now there's an open feedback between you know, different community members, different people from parts of the world being able to contact Moors and say, hey, you know, I do it this way or this is how I do it. Or now I can take that and plug it into how I do things. So this global learning has complemented, I believe, in my opinion, has really complemented technology as a whole. So now not only do we have better things like say, you know, we have life straws, this is what's attached to my pack, but you know, we have things like life straws, so we have better technology, but we also have, you know, more global learning and global learning practices. And of course, as luck would have it, the wind is starting to pick up, but we're going to keep on going. So the last part to this long conversation about the state of bushcrafting for me is the pros and cons of YouTube making wilderness living, bushcrafting, self-reliance so popular. I'm going to start off with the pros, and I think the largest pro is the very clear ease of learning. Once again, we've kind of talked about this already, but it is still very true that, you know, I think it's very easy to hop on YouTube, or it is very easy to hop on YouTube, find out what I need to know about a particular technique or topic. I don't have to pay to go to a class. I don't have to buy a book in particular to, you know, learn about this topic, I can just go watch a YouTube video, oftentimes from a very reliable source, even sometimes people like Morris Kohansky, even people like Morris Kohansky or Dave Canterbury, you know, people who have years and years, decades of experience. Also, another thing that I think is really nice is because there's such a culture of learning, apologies for the wind again, uh, a lot of your content creators, even myself sometimes included, you know, really push themselves to new extents. We see people like Survival Lily or Joe Robinette who are, you know, who are, you know, throwing themselves onto islands or in the middle of the Canadian wilderness, just completely alone. And I believe these things probably would have never really been fully realized in these individuals' lives if they hadn't had this dedication or this desire to really learn and gain new experiences that they could share with their audience. So I think another way that YouTube has positively impacted us as creators is, you know, it's pushing us into new environments and it's pushing us to really go out there and, you know, try new things, not just get stuck up in the same old ways. So those are the largest um, pros that I really see that YouTube has helped contribute to the wilderness, self-reliance, survival, and bushcraft scene. Now, of course, all those pros are not without their cons. I think one of the largest cons, sadly, to YouTube is that there's a lot of people out there looking for fame, glory, and there's also a lot of companies out there looking to take advantage of eager consumers that want to, you know, aspire to be just like Joe Robinette or aspire to be just like Survival Lily. And while I'm not saying you can't be like them, the probability is generally fairly low. And this isn't necessarily saying that you should quit YouTube or not YouTube, quit bushcrafting. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that you should immediately go out and buy whatever knife they've designed or whatever tool they're endorsing. So I think one of the largest downsides to survival, kind of like a lot of different parts of YouTube, has been just this large influencer product pushing kind of sensation that's go gone on. And I can't even say that I'm fully not a part of that. I try to not be a part of it. But, you know, it's very much widespread, almost like an epidemic in the wilderness, uh, in survival community. And on one hand, I appreciate the new technology. However, on the other hand, I do realize there's only so many super steel knives that can be created. And, you know, a knife is a knife is a knife. So, you know, when you see these different people, 
you know, these expert survivalists on YouTube pushing products. It's definitely disheartening, disheartening to say the least. So that's probably the largest con for me, or the largest few cons for me, is I don't like those people that aim for, you know, the glory and the attention of their channels, and the product pushing is never appreciated. So anyways, guys, this is the state, at least just in my honest opinion, this is really how I see bushcrafting, how it's grown, how it's evolved, and I think that that's completely natural and normal. Anyways, guys, it's been a little bit of a different video, but I really felt just kind of impressed to do this video because I think it's really important and I think there's a lot of people out there that just try to deny the future of bushcraft. It's like, no, don't do that. So anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.